Welcome to the shop. Today I'm going to show you how to strike an arc when you're stick welding. This is a question I've received quite a bit in the comments. How do you strike an arc? My rod keeps sticking. And let me tell you, I've been there. Right? When I first started stick welding, oh, it's been about 20 years ago now, it wasn't until I could just strike an arc without thinking about it that stick welding became pretty fun for me. Now, <clears throat> let's talk about why you have to strike an arc, right? So in order to initiate an arc, you have to actually contact the center core of the electrode with your workpiece. And then as you come off of there, it makes a little bit of a spark and that'll help to, to ionize the air so that you can actually have a stable arc between your electrode and your workpiece. So until you actually contact those two together, that can't happen. But why is that hard? Because as soon as you do, there's just enough heat that it wants to bond this electrode and weld it actually to your workpiece. And so your rod will stick and that can be so frustrating. Now, if you're looking at this, you've probably seen on uh, the internet or in a book or someone's told you either you strike like a match, you know, with the end or you tap it. And while that's true, I think what I do is actually a hybrid of both. And after you've been doing it for a while, you just kind of light up and you don't really think much about it. But um, let's go over each of those techniques uh, real quick. Now, the first thing to remember is you don't want to strike too hard, right? It needs to be real gentle. You're just barely touching it. So I would recommend starting with the strike a match type approach. Um, and again, I think what I do is kind of a, a mixture of both. You really just have to touch it. Now, if you're gonna tap it, then you just tap real gently. You don't wanna just bam. Because if you do, you're probably going to stick your electrode. A couple other things to keep in mind are the settings on your machine and your machine setup as a whole. So if your machine is not set hot enough, it'll be very difficult to strike an arc without uh, sticking. In fact, when you're first starting out, I'd recommend setting your machine on the hot side of things as you practice striking an arc. The next thing is after you uh, first strike your arc, I like to come right off of striking an arc and I'll hold an arc that's about a quarter of an inch long, but only for a second or so, and then move in to where your arc length is, is nice and tight. So I'm gonna show you just a little drill that you can do to get started. So the first thing you're gonna need is a practice plate, and then uh, I'd recommend taking a marker and drawing some lines across it, right? and then marking those off at about, you know, an inch or so, um, like I'm doing here. And so when you have that plate ready, then you can make uh, some practice welds. I have a fly here in the shop coming after me. Anyway, you can practice making those little, uh, you know, one inch or so long welds. So you're striking an arc and then you're welding about an inch. And then do that again and again and again to build up that muscle memory. I did a full stick welding tutorial where I go over everything from machines to electrodes to technique. Uh, link down in the description. So check that out. I think it'll help you out quite a bit as you're getting started. So one thing that you're, you're going to find for sure, especially if you're running 7018, is you know you strike up an arc the first time it goes pretty well. The next time you go to strike an arc and uh, you're just scratching and tapping and nothing happens. And that's because the center of the electrode will burn back into the coating and on 7018, you get kind of a slag over the end that'll keep it from uh, striking an arc there. And so there's a couple ways to, to deal with this. One, um, and this is what I think most people do starting out, and you know, it seems like the convenient thing to do, and it works okay, is you'll just kind of beat on it there. And you'll eventually crack the, the coating, but usually when I've done that, you know, you're likely to just stick it once it goes and, and that doesn't work too well so a couple other uh, tricks that you can use is you can keep a file nearby and just use it and knock off that slag. So another trick that I've tried before and actually works okay is I take some of this uh, sandpaper that has a, an adhesive back for auto body work I've tried to do some of that very unsuccessfully by the way um, but I have lots of sandpaper left over from it and uh, so you can take some of that and stick it right to your table a little ways away from your welding 
and then uh, it actually uh, will work okay to take your rod and you can just take and rub right on there and that can knock it off just the same as a file can but you can do it a little faster right you just rub on there and then you're ready to roll again. Let's talk a little bit about actually welding on a project because what happens when you strike an arc, wherever you were striking an arc as you were doing the practice there, you probably can see some little marks and those are called arc strikes. You don't want to have those visible on your project. I'll go ahead and strike an arc where I'm going to weld over and then I'll move back while I'm holding that kind of quarter inch long arc to where I'll start welding and then move in tight. If you make your arc strike where you're going to weld over the top of it then you'll never have a visible arc strike and that'll work really well for you hey well thanks for tuning in today hopefully this video has been helpful for you uh, as you get started stick welding and, and learning to strike an arc uh, be sure to check out the other videos on my channel and i have a lot of content coming out about tig welding more stick welding videos some projects so if you don't want to miss any of that click that subscribe button now and we'll see you next time